In this video, I'll answer a question from the Tennis Files mailbag about my favorite practice drills, how to deal with frustration during matches, how to anticipate where the ball is going, how to fix your toss, and more coming right up. Hey, I'm Mirabhan Aranshad from Tennis Files, and on this channel, I teach you the latest strategies and techniques to help you improve your tennis game. I interview hundreds of the top tennis pros and coaches in the world on my podcasts and online tennis conferences, and today I'm going to answer six great questions from the Tennis Files mailbag. Question number one, I can hit it really well, and then I have a string of hitting out or in the net. This is from Kristen, a 2.5 player. So Kristen, first off, I would tell you to pick bigger targets. Aim your shots somewhere between the service line and a few feet from the baseline. Don't go for the lines. Now aim higher over the net to give you better net clearance. And you also want to pay attention to your racket face when you miss balls. For instance, if you're hitting shots too long, then you may want to preemptively close your racket face to produce more topspin. While if you're hitting your shots too short, then your racket face may be too closed and you might want to aim higher as well. You also want to work on mastering topspin, which will bring the ball down and in the court. And you also want to focus on getting into a balanced position with intense footwork to help you with that consistency. Number two, coming up with quality and realistic drills from K, a 3.5 player. So K, you should definitely first and foremost choose drills based on what you need to work on. For a lot of us, that's a serve and return. So you simply want to get your partner and practice serving to spots and then returning. And I recommend returning hard and down the middle. That's a great and high percentage play. Now, as we all know, the first four shots, which Craig O'Shaughnessy talks about, who I've interviewed on my summits before, is one of the biggest keys that you need to focus on. So the serve and return are obviously a huge part of the first four shots. And that's why I recommend working on that. You also do wanna practice your serve plus one, which is your serve and then the shot after your opponent hits the return back. So to practice this, grab your partner, then serve out wide, and then once your partner returns your serve, then you wanna hit your next shot into the open court on the other side. Now some of my favorite drills are pressure drills, which get you ready for match play, and I've learned several of them from Jorge Capistani, who is a fantastic coach. And the first one is to play a set by starting each game at 30 all, and then you just play out the set. Another option is to start sets from four all and then to play the set out. And another great drill are closeout sets, which is if you reach game point and then you lose that point, then you go back to zero. So let's say if you are up 40-30 and then you lose that point on your serve, then it goes to love 30. Talk about a lot of pressure, right? Another game that I really like to play, I learned from my friend Will Hamilton from Fuzzy Ola Balls, and that is called the tug of war baseline game. So what you do is you start at five all and you choose one person who their goal is to get to 10 and the other person's goal is to get to zero. And so let's say if I am trying to get to 10 and my opponent is trying to get to zero and then I win the first two points, then all of a sudden the score is seven. And then if my opponent then wins a point, then it goes back down to six. So you only keep score with one number and the score goes up or down depending on who wins the point. Now for you doubles fanatics out there, I like to do serve and volley games cross court only, which is fantastic for doubles play and you can do this with only one partner. And one last tip with the drills is I love to attach a punishment to add accountability and something to play for. So let's say the person who loses buys the other person dinner or has to do 30 push-ups or something like that just to add that extra aura of accountability to your practice match. Question number three. I get frustrated if I lose one point in the game. I always want to win every single point. And this is from Kushal, a 4.0 player. So Kushal, your standards of winning points are higher than the best players in the world. And I learned from Craig O'Shaughnessy that the number one player in the world, Novak Djokovic, guess how many points he wins. I'll give you a second. The answer is that Djokovic only wins 54% of the points that he plays. That is a staggering amount of points that you actually lose. And so we have to realize that we're not machines. We will make mistakes. We're human. There are many variables that causes us to make mistakes, whether that's our mentality, a slightly off racket face, a really good shot that you're facing, your footwork is a split second off, etc. And so when you get frustrated, one of the keys that has helped me a lot throughout the years is having an in-between point routine to reset and refocus, which I learned from Jeff Greenwald. And some of these things that you can do are playing with your strings, 
feeling your feet on the ground, having positive affirmations, and having a deep breath. So combining several of these in between points is really gonna help your mind refocus and remember that it is totally normal to lose focus and what is key is that you refocus yourself and remember what the game plan is and then try to execute that to the best of your ability. Question number four is from Sharon, a 3.0 player, and Sharon writes, I have trouble trying to recognize where and how my opponent will be making his or her return shot. And so I learned a great deal from my friend Faisal Hassan on the tennis summit. His biggest advice for this is to scan the opponent when the ball is traveling away from you and to think about the four P's and I'll describe them each. So first, think about the postures, which is the balance of the opponent. Are they leaning forward or are they leaning back? And also pay attention to whether the ball is in your opponent's strike zone. Is the ball lower than where they normally hit? Is it higher than where they normally hit? Or is it right there for them to destroy? <laughs> Second is think about the position of your opponent. Where is your opponent in relative to the court? Are they inside the court? Are they behind the court? Are they to one extreme side or the other of the court? Number three is preparation how the opponent is able to set up to hit the ball. So pay attention to their footwork and their balance. Look at how much they're able to rotate on their shot. Obviously, if they have more time to rotate and you see a bigger rotation, that's usually gonna end up uh, with you facing a more powerful shot. And then notice the patterns of your opponent. And you can do this during the warm-up and also during the match. So where do they hit certain shots in certain situations? For example, where do they generally hit their forehand when they're on the run? Where do they hit a backhand down the tee return? And all this information will give you anticipative info on what type of ball the opponent is going to hit and where it may be going. So remember to pay attention to the four Ps and they will give you a lot of great insight into anticipating where the ball is going next. Question number five is from Nusrit, a 3.0 player, and Nusrit writes, my forehand shots are always hitting my racket frame. So Nusrit, you're not alone, I actually do this too. A lot of us are often anxious to see where the ball is going, and then we end up whipping our head along with our body. I frame the ball several times. Actually, most recently, I was reminding myself to look at the ball, to, to zoom in on the ball when it's after the bounce. And so the simple solution is we're just not looking at the ball long enough and positioning our body accordingly to be able to hit the ball cleanly. So what we need to do first off is to track the ball once it leaves your opponent's racket. And then we need to zoom into the ball once it bounces. And we need to keep our eyes on the ball as long as possible. So a simple drill is when you hit the ball, count one 1,000 and keep your eyes on the ball until you complete the one 1,000. Now, just doing that drill alone will definitely help you to hit a cleaner ball. It'll help you adjust your feet as well in relation to where the ball is because you have a better idea where the ball is going since you're paying attention to it with your eyes. And so keeping your eyes on the ball as long as possible is going to help you. And so obviously once you finish counting to 1-1000, then you do want to make sure to go and scan your opponent and see what's going on over there so that you can anticipate where the ball is going. But the 1-1000 drill is super simple and it will help you hit much cleaner shots. Last question. Right now my toss is all over the place. I've tried everything and it's better, but I'm still catching and redoing way too much. I've tried all the tips through video analysis. I know I need to get my tossing arm more vertical. I get that I should be placing the ball, not tossing, but still it's not automatic. When I turn away a little on the start and tell myself to slow the arm down and think diagonal direction, that helps. Well, that is a lot to be thinking of. I have always enjoyed your videos and ones on the toss are great, thanks. This is from Michael, a 4.0 player. So Michael, the first biggest tip I can give you is to slow your tossing arm down and you can try these tips piecemeal until you get each one and that's a key as, as far as not being, getting overwhelmed with information. So again, slow down your tossing arm. Second is don't flick the wrist. Instead, you wanna lift the ball up and pretend like you are placing an item on a shelf or as Ryan Reedy also says, pretend that you are lifting a glass of water. Number three is you want to keep the arm relatively straight. Number four is to release the ball around head height. This is a great tip that I learned and once I started doing that, uh, releasing the ball between, let's say my chin and the top of my forehead, I found my tosses to become much more consistent 
And number five is to make sure that the ball isn't spinning in the air. Learn to have the flat release. If the ball is spinning, then you're, it's gonna result in much more inconsistent serves. And also, you, when you lift the ball up, you want to spread your fingers instead of doing any wrist flickage. You're gonna have a much more controlled toss that does not spin around. And lastly, you can try different tossing techniques like having your palm to the side rather than facing up to reduce inconsistencies in your toss. Let me know your biggest struggle in tennis in the comments below and I'll try to feature your question in a future video. If you wanna learn how to hit a massive and consistent forehand, then click on the video that just popped up on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, keep improving your tennis game.